Hey folks, Captain Dave here, and guess what? This is going to be an inst installment of the progression of jigging inshore. And what do I mean by jigging? If you haven't seen some of the other videos in which I make these, uh, you might want to check it out. The whole objective is, is that swivel right there and why and how that swivel is the handiest thing. I mean, they're just unique and they're extremely handy. And where do you get them? Well, you get them from me. I am selling them at a 20 pack in two sizes on eBay but that right there is a wicked little jig for insure okay but what I'm going to show you is the progression this here is a butterfish jig what they call a butterfish it's kind of boat shaped on the bottom it's the same as a slab spoon except it's got eyes all right and it's flat on this side and what I've been doing with all of my jigs is adding a hook to the tie point. This is where I tie it on. So when you are fluttering the jig, the hook's not on the direct bottom to get hung up. All right. And here's an example. There is, let me put this over here. There's a slab spoon. That is a Bomber brand slab spoon. It is kind of boat shaped over here, a little convex, and then flat over here. And the Freshwater Boys, this is how it all got started for me. How it all got started is I was watching some videos on YouTube about this spoon right here, the Bomber uh, Slab Spoon. And they were just vertical jigging in a lake with these and targeting suspended fish that were sitting on the bottom. Now what I do is I take off the split ring because I hate split rings and you'll learn why here and coming up. And I add my own pinch on stainless steel hook but this has its problems where this being that the hook is on the swivel and when you touch bottom this doesn't get as hung up so that's how all this got started all right so let's set those aside here is some of the original slab spoons that I purchased. Same exact thing as the bomber, flat on one side, convex on the other, with a high point, it's the ridge right down the center. I don't know if you're going to end up being able to see that ridge. With eyes, some color. Same exact as this one. Well, not exact. I mean, they're a little bit different. This is a Do It mold that you can buy right from Do It, or it used to be. Uh, now Do It doesn't have these eye holes where you can put in these eyes. And Bomber has these their own mold where the eyes stick out. So this one's seven eighths. This one is uh, ounce and an eighth. This one, this one here's thicker. This one's thinner. Okay, that's how it all got started. These came with trebles and split rings. And what I did is, over time, wanted to get rid of this hook. So what did I do? 
I did stuff like this. I put a hook on the bottom. Then I sat around thinking, butterfly jigging. Most of the fish that I'm going after are going to slam dunk this entire spoon. All right. No pecking, trout, reds, jacks, ladyfish, mackerel. They're going to whack this entire thing. So what I did is I came up and I had these swivels made. This swivel is closed on this end, on this end, and on this end it was open. And I put the swivel on here and then pinch it closed. And that's a 60 pound swivel. I mean, it takes a hell of a fish to try to open that crimped end. Okay, I have not had one fail yet. So, this flutters, you know, that flutters, and I just tie it off right there. It keeps it the hooked basically to one side, and the hook sticking out. So, that's that progression. So then, I started getting, as I like to say, real jiggy with it. Um, years ago, I started collecting, I guess you could say, at every bargain bin, the Lure Jensen Crippled Herring. That is a one and a half ounce Lure Jensen Crippled Herring. And years ago, I was sitting over by the Atlantic Shipyard. Actually, I was sitting inside the Atlantic Shipyard, just on the inside, here in Jacksonville, Florida. And what happened was, is I had a couple of these, and they had a siwash hook just on the end, which is a, a siwash hook. What's a siwash hook look like? Let me get you a siwash hook to see. A siwash hook would look like, well, I don't, yeah. A siwash hook looks like this. It's a big, kind of wide hook. Nothing fancy, not curbed. Got a very, very long point on it. And many times siwash hooks are open-eyed, so you can put it on. See, here's a little tiny chrome bomber spoon with a siwash hook on the end. So here I am, I'm sitting at Atlantic Shipyard with all that structure that's in there, the rails going underwater, and I was kind of bored, and I was by myself, caught some fish, but then really, um, you know, they were they weren't really, it was, the tide was kind of going out and nothing was really going on. So what I did is I took one of these and I started casting it out and letting it flutter to the bottom and then jigging it off the bottom. And to my surprise, well, not really, I mean, I figured that's what would happen, is I started catching mangrove snappers, croakers, yellowmouth trout, and I think I even caught a 21-inch redfish. So, that was a couple years ago. And that, that's what really got me thinking. Versus a jig head, this gets down quick, and you can hold it in that current and work from bottom to two feet up. Bottom to two feet up. Where the fish are. Okay, and you can do it kind of on an angle or vertically. So here, because this is a heavier spoon, I took a oblong split ring, put on a really nice heavy swivel, and actually these hooks... Are a, that's a 3 ot stainless steel eagle claw trot line hook. 
And the reason I'm using them is because they got this big eye. And you can you don't buy these with them open, but you can open that eye just so so slightly and slip it on the swivel. So there you go, you got like a little miniature butterfly jig for inshore. Okay? Just like I'm doing with this. Just like I'm doing with this. All right. You got all various jigs for various conditions. Okay. And various, how much do you want, you know, if a bluefish eats it, how much do you want to lose, right? So here's some of mine that I've made that are the same. I made these with my own mold. And I put, I painted them black, and I put lots of little glow dots on it. This is paint. And if I hold it up to the light here really good, and let's see how good she glows. Let's see. Well, she's starting to glow a little bit right there. Starting to glow a little bit. All right, so I I made ones like this even. So let's see. Then I was dabbling, of course, just offshore on the nearshore reefs. And here's some kind of fancy jigs where I made my own little single swinging hook. So you got ones like that. They're a little heavier. Go straight to the bottom real quick. All right. Same deal with these. I was highly successful one day just absolutely having a ball with, I believe, this jig. And I buy these because it has this very large wire eye. It's a glow. It glows. And it comes with this ring already. See, paying attention to the details is what matters. I can buy these and they have this little ring on it already and a very large eye. So what do I do? I take a split ring, I take an oblong split ring, that heavy duty swivel, and my stainless trot line hook. And now I have a real butterfly kind of system where there's my tie point is on that. And then when I am fighting a fish, I am straight from tie point to hook. I'm not going through the jig. And one day, I was on the inside of the South Jetty during slack water in the 83-foot hole. And I was firing these down all the way down 83 feet deep in the mouth of the St. Johns River. And I was jigging these up off the bottom because this one here is 45 grams, which I believe is about maybe two ounces or ounce and three quarter or something like that. Maybe even two. I can't remember what the 45 grams is. But um, this glows and this flutters really good. All right. And I was firing this down in that eddy three foot hole. And every time I started to jig it up or even it was fluttering down, I got hit by a jack. And I granted, this is summertime, so I'm just out goofing around. Then, believe it or not, a five-foot shark hits this. And I mean, he cleaned my clock. And I had this hook in the corner of his mouth. I got that shark all the way. It was a black tip. I got that black tip all the way up to the boat before he just trashed me. And I was just tied off to this little round uh, disc here, this little washer which that's what it's more like, his little washer. I was tied off to this, and he just went nuts on the side of the boat and broke everything off. Caught croakers, jacks, I think I had a ladyfish or two, but I had a five-foot black tip shark on this. Whoa. Of course, I would have loved a red or, you know, something like that, a bull red, but that five-foot shark was good enough for me right there. 
So then we have these. Um, then I started, you know, just bargain bin stuff. Now here's a real heavy one. Notice the difference. It doesn't have that little ring attached here because this is a different brand. But I got these wire um, assist hook, really nice hook. I got these wire assist hooks, you know, just in a bargain bin somewhere. And I would just tie off to here. Now that, or you could tie off to the, to the uh, split ring and then you'd be direct. So I got this. I should have been using this for, for the toothy critters. All right, then I start dabbling in, I mean, here's, I had a video a while back where I was sitting up in the river and I was taking these little chrome slabs with these little tiny hooks, right? Little deadly sharp little hook. And I got this eye in it, but they're chrome. This is five eighths of an ounce, same thing. It's got a convex over here and it's flat over here and I was pitching these up by a dock and I was just slamming giant croakers they were hitting this thing like it was no tomorrow I caught about five or six croakers and made a video of reeling in like three of them just just to show and I've used these and set up in the river and pounded the yellow mouth trout so I mean that is a very good little lure Right, if you're going to jig. And, you know, and I've picked up over time a whole bunch of little bombers. Just cheap. Real cheap. All right. So then, you know, I go on to eBay. And I start seeing really nice, m nicely made jigs like this. Just like this one. The same people make this. This is a butterfish. This one here is a butterfish. They call that a butterfish. And this one here is just called just a hammered minnow. Right? And I do the same thing. All because I have these killer swivels. All right? Now, this one, you know, it's more straight up and down. It doesn't do a whole lot of crazy fluttering. All right? But I've got these... And a real heavyweight, too. This is like three quarters of an ounce. And this is like two ounce. Right? I do the same thing. As soon as I go to a bigger jig, I start beefing it way up. I use the split ring, the swivel, and a beefier hook. All right? So, then it really starts taking off. Things start really, I start really getting into the thinking category here. So I go back to the same company that makes these little, the jigs, these bigger jigs, with the washer on it, but with the little ring. Okay, because I really like that ring already being on this big eye. So what do I do? is I get a whole bunch of nice little small ones for inshore. It's got a little glow dot there. They come in all various kind of colors. I don't think the colors really matter that much. But right there, I go and I pinch on one of my swivels and I put on a hook. Now you're gonna see that I pinch on the swivel onto the eye, but then this is a closed end of the swivel so how do I get the hook on there well I'm gonna tell you what I do is I take a screwdriver and I stick it right there and I tap it and this is just like a mustad live bait black super point hook I mean woo that thing's wicked sharp and I get the eye open just enough and I slip on the swivel on this end and one of the handiest tools for doing all this work is a set of these little mini uh, C-Striker 
yellow crimpers. I got these for 10 bucks at my local bait shop. And what I do is I stick this hook in here after just opening it a little bit and I give it a little crunch, 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 right? And it closes it up. Same thing I do when I want to close my swivel end. I do the same thing. I come up here like this. I put that in there. Put this swivel in there. And I give it a little crunch, crunch. And it'll, it'll crunch that right on down. Okay? So these are really handy. Ten bucks. So, I've got a whole bunch of these. <coughs> Excuse me. So, the progression continues. So, I start really looking around. Now, these jigs right here uh, kind of just go up and down. They flutter a little bit. I mean, they flutter a little bit. But they're just kind of straight up and down jigs. Then, I start bumping into a place that sells micro Japanese jigs here. That's a uh, 20 gram. This is one of my all time favorites. I've got two super favorites. Now we're stepping it up. Instead of a jig costing $1.79, okay, or, you know, $1.89, but now we're stepping it up to like four bucks, okay? This is <clears throat> pure glow paint with pink stripes. And I don't know if you can see it, but let's say it's kind of beveled on this end here, flat on the bottom, got a little bevel there, and it's thin here, and it's got right here at the eyes, it's got a whole bumped out thick part. And what that makes this jig do, and I just put my swivel and a number one must add on there. I'm trying to match the hook size to the jig always. And I'm just going to tie it off right there. And I'm not doing a loop knot or anything fancy. I'm just tying it straight there. Is this jig is so cool because when you pop this off the bottom, this jig literally goes and it goes down like this and searches. It kind of searches because all of a sudden when you pop it it turns and searches right and it's got a very very unique action and this is called the water bug this thing is absolutely a little killer jig inshore little jig all right so then i got the pink and striped ones here and i got silver these are just this thing looks exactly like a wounded little um, glass minnow. It's got some glow stripage on there that you don't see very good. But that, these are absolutely super killer. Uh, I think I even have, let's see in here. Here's something. Here's, just a, here's a throwback. How about a half ounce crippled herring chrome? That little thing dances around pretty good. Same thing, add a swivel, add my hook. So, let's take it even to the next level. Shimano and a lot of other companies are coming out with super specialized jigs. And I'm wanting to be right on top of it too. But, I'm not paying no $14, $15 a jig. And 90% of the time, they don't make them small. This is referred, all your small jigs like these are micro jigs. Then we get to something like this. This is my second favorite. It is so kick-ass of an action on this that you'll never, ever, ever get the action that this thing will give out of a jig head with a soft plastic on it. You just never will. You just, you, you, there's no rivaling the action in our current 
okay, and sitting along the jetty rocks or something like that, or sitting along large structure, docks, okay, that this goes straight to the bottom, right? And if you're in current, you can just fish a spot, fish a spot, fish a spot, okay, right behind the boat. Um, so that's what I do, or I vertically fish structure underneath the boat. This is the same as a Shimano flat fall jig. It is completely flat on this side. And then over on this side, it has kind of a taper to a real thick part right about in the center. And then a little knife edge right here. Real, it goes quick. I put double hooks on this because this can get hit one way or can get hit another by a fish. And I've already caught fish on this. And that will do that. And they put the eyes on there. And it's a, this is glow with orange stripes. So this thing is really seen in the water. As a matter of fact, let's take a look. See here. You put these outside hanging on your rod. And I'm telling you, do you get these really glow up? Let's see. Let's turn the lights off. Yeah, you can see that. It's starting to really glow up. All right, it's kind of funny when I'm outside and I am in the sun with my box. And then I walk in the house. So there you can see it's starting to glow up. I like glow. I've always liked glow. But I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see those angles on there. But the finish on these is superior. It's a 40 gram. I believe that's maybe an ounce and a half. I'm not really sure. we got to look that up. Huge eyes on the end. And what I did is I took my stainless steel trot line hooks bent it open, slipped it on, bent it open, slipped it on, and I tie off to the eye side here. And this flat fall jig literally goes like this. Actually, it'll turn over on its side, and it goes shoo, 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 right on down to the bottom. You twitch it up, and it goes like this. And like Shimano says, this this is a jig that doesn't work you to death. I mean, you see some of these guys, you know, these speed jigging and all that. Well, people are coming to realize that that's a ton of work, especially in deep water. So Shimano makes these, you know, up to like, you know, 12, 10 ounces or 8 ounces or something. But this is a little micro one. And this thing works superior in the river. You don't have to have the hook on the front. And believe it or not, it doesn't get fouled very often either. But you just pitch it out, and it goes right down to the bottom. Pitch, jig it up. I mean, it's just, this is just an unbelievable jig. And they're not real expensive, but they're not $1.59 either. Good God. Okay, I'm trying to get you another color here. But... Oh. I can't even get them the hell out of here. All right. So there's another one. There's a serious glass meadow looking color. Okay. Also, it has a little gold glow stripage on it. So, that is the entire progression that I have kind of come up with. All the way from the first jig that I bought, which, or the first jigs that I made with a do-it mold. Here's one that's just kind of gray. And I took out the eyes that would have been like this. These little red eyes. See, these were all like factory seconds or something. They're kind of messed up a little bit, right? 
and I just put glow paint inside there. Glow paint. And I actually turned this one upside down. So, there's all kinds of things you can do. I mean, look at this one. I went kind of nutty with this. Here's black on one side. Glow dots. Then look at all a uh, bunch of glow dots. And then like the eyes that I took out of that one, I stuck two eyes on there inside some glow paint. This one looks pretty wicked. So all this really is is to grab the fish's attention. Ensure the secret for me is ensure, which that's where I'm fishing, is because the water is the color that it is in the St. John. Here's another one, kind of a tie-dye. I was just playing around. Tie-dye color with glow on it. Okay, the same little catfish trot line hook and my swivel. Uh, what was I saying? I can't remember what I was saying. Um, it, yes, this all got started with me making my own and painting them and doing weird things to them and buying some factory seconds and stuff that look like this. And I mean, I bought easily hundreds and hundreds of them and I've got them all the way from ounce and three eighths to ounce and an eighth and five eighths in this type of style. I got blue and white ones, pink and white ones, blue and green ones. I got all different colors here. Here's here's one that I bought. Okay, same. What that is is a sticker with the scale pattern on it. All right. So the next thing I want to show you is why these swivels are so valuable, especially when doing things with jigs or putting this swivel on the front of a spoon, putting this swivel on the front of a spinner bait, putting this swivel um, on a hook, a rubber worm hook. Okay. This swivel is so unique and has made this entire box pretty much. Okay. I've done a lot, a lot of stuff here using my swivels, all right, and just regular swivels for some more heavy-duty type applications. So all this can be done very easy, and I'm going to show you kind of putting together some of these jigs. And how I do it. Now, you may be asking, because it's kind of hitting me in the face, what is this? Well, this isn't a jig. This is a little bass lure that you tie to right here. And it's weighted forward. And it drops down, and you pulse it up or just reel it. And it vibrates back and forth like this. It bat vibrates on the retrieve back and forth. Trout don't seem to love this thing. They don't really know what to think of it. I've caught a few trout on it. This is called a Rage Blade by Strike King. But this thing, and I've I've had I got like five or six of them. I'm only down to three now. When it comes to catching ladyfish in May and June to use for cut bull red bait, this is what I was using. I was going over to the little jetties and I was just burning them damn ladyfish with this thing. They can't stand this. Can't stand it. I mean, they chased this son of a bitch, two or three of them right up to the boat, each one wanting to hit it. So, um, I'll be buying more of these next spring. Because you cast these out, let them sink, and just reel them back real fast to the boat. It's kind of like, this is kind of like a cuda tube for ladyfish. I've never seen anything like it before in my life. 
And good God, does it work on those ladies. But it doesn't really work that great on anything else. That's for sure. Okay, let me stop this and let's come on back. And I'm going to try to put something together here using my swivel and show you up close. If you don't have any creativity of, and don't know how to use my swivels here, well, I'm going to build it into a jig for you, okay? So we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 